How are you reading these events at the moment in Hanoi? I think it's just unbelievable the degree to which uh, President Trump has essentially cast all of the Republican national security uh, types overboard and has basically embraced a very soft uh, uh, approach, which is to say, look, I'm in no hurry, and as long as you're not testing, you know, we're good, and so, you know, we'll take our time with this. Uh, I can tell you, you know, I, I negotiated with the North Koreans between 2005 and 2009, and I got a lot of advice from the John Boltons of the era, all telling me I can't shake hands with them, I can't accept dinner invitations from them, I can't have a toast to them at a Chinese banquet. So this idea of uh, you know holding the North Koreans at uh, arm's length and demanding immediate denuclearization seems to be gone. And yet, when the president is asked, well, what's our policy, he says, I want complete and, uh, complete and immediate and irreversible uh, denuclearization. Well, that's not how he's acting. And I think the North Koreans are kind of feeling they're in good shape. They've actually broken out of their diplomatic uh, isolation. They've got a situation where clearly uh, they can take a few sort of random acts of denuclearization, be rewarded for them. But meanwhile, we have a president who just seems to be off on his own. And one wonders, you know, is there is there this big change of policy? And maybe shouldn't he tell the American people that there is? It seems to be completely dis, uh, disconnected, untethered from anything else. Uh, Christopher, I mean, these are not the only two stakeholders, of course. We have others. How do you think people in Beijing will look at this and indeed also Vladimir Putin in Moscow? Because they are all part of those Six Nation talks. Well, you recall, until about a year ago, when the Singapore thing got going, uh, the Chinese had not met with the uh, North Korean leader, Kim Jong-un, for the entire time that Kim Jong-un had become uh, the leader there, some seven years. And then once uh, Singapore was announced, uh, lo and behold, the Chinese and uh, and Kim Jong-un had met, uh, and now I think they're up to like four, four uh, summit meetings. So I think the main result so far of, uh, of Singapore and maybe of Hanoi is that it's brought um, China and North Korea together. Look, that said, I mean, my own view is the six-party process. I don't care what you want to call it, but it was the notion that various countries in the region needed to take some responsibility because they had some skin in the game. Uh, the Chinese took the lead. They had the uh, they had the talks based in Beijing. Uh, we were able to work with the Chinese on a daily basis with the North Koreans. Some would argue, and I think President Bush, uh, President Trump would be one to argue that we didn't get anywhere. I mean, we did get them to shut down the reactor. We got them to blow up the cooling tower. We got a few things done, but it's quite clear we didn't we didn't finish the job by any means. And so he's clearly trying a different approach, which is basically to give China after action reports. The same with. Japan that has some real concerns about whether the president might cut a separate deal on missiles and leave out the missiles that can reach uh, Japan. So there are, there's a, a whole body of sort of diplomatic architecture that's just gone. And what we have now is just a one-on-one -on -one talk. So it's very much in, in uh, President Trump's lap. And I think he's going to get a lot of criticism for it back in the States.